Hi everyone, it's Trina from A Cosmopolite. Thank you for being here. Thank you for tuning in. If what I have to share resonates, I'd love to see you subscribe. Also hit the notification bell because we know YouTube be crazy and just buries stuff in there. And to support my work, please like this video and share it with others whom you feel would resonate with this work as well. Also share it on your social media. I would love the support, the help, and the love. I'm trying to get back into the swing of things like I used to do back in 2015, but we all know we shouldn't live in the past, right? But what I loved about 2015, well, there's a lot of things to love about 2015 for me. Amazing activations and connection with Mother Earth, the celestial realms, my guides, the goddess, all kinds of stuff. But what I was doing in 2015 was just going with the flow anytime something came to me. And the work that I'm in and the energy that I have, I am a, a communicator, a channeler. So really sometimes when I think my thoughts are just my thoughts, it's something that really needs to be shared. And so in 2015, I would just plop down wherever I could and record a video and just let whatever flow flow. So I'm trying to get back into that and stop hindering, you know, messages and information from coming forward. So that's what I'm aiming to do today. I feel super, super inspired for a few reasons and quite a few connections with stuff. So um, yeah, I'm over here like playing with my feet. So you're gonna see my, my big toe here. I like to sit in half lotus. Do any of you guys like to sit in half lotus? I don't know, it's like one of my most comforting seating positions when I sit down. Where was I? So I'm inspired by quite a few things. So the very first thing, what I've been trying to do since last Saturday is when I first wake up, I just get on YouTube and I type in Navratri. So Navratri, I mentioned it in my other video. Um, and whatever day it is of Navat Navratri. So today is day seven. While I took Thai to work, I wanted to listen to the mantra for day seven of Navratri. Now, what I found was a mantra for Kal Kalratri, 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 Kal Kalratri, <laughs> whatever, dude. So basically it's a name, a word, but it, it's for Kali, the goddess Kali. Kalratri means, it, it's two words put together. So Kal, and they'll put the meaning up here after I look it up. And then Ratri, which I'm pretty sure that word means night. So these two words together is the name of this aspect of the goddess. Let me rewind a little bit though, because if you didn't watch my most recent video, I want to share just a smidge of what Navratri is because I'm no professional on it. I decided to join it and observe and celebrate it in my own way, going with my intuition, whatever comes to me. So Navratri is this celebration for nine nights. And I think Navratri literally means nine or nine nights. Yeah, that's right. Navratri. So yes, nine nights. So for nine days and nights, uh, people celebrate an aspect of the goddess. Um, from what I'm gathering from some friends and just my own research, a lot of um, devotees celebrate different aspects of Durga. There's other, I guess, cultures that don't just see it as celebrating aspects of Durga. It's, it's you know, different aspects of the goddess. But to me, I guess it doesn't really matter because Durga is the goddess right? It's just one, I guess, facet or incarnation or avatar, whichever it is, of the goddess, right? So overall, it's still celebrating the goddess. And I'm all about that, right? Like, that's amazing. And then we gotta add up in here. So I'm all about that. I'm all about celebrating, you know, the goddess. Let's turn that down a smidge. I wanna make sure you guys are still able to hear me. In my research, I'm finding different variations of how to, or really who to give, I guess, your focus or your devotion to. Um, there is this one um, lecturer, 
you know, I guess he's an educator or professor in this certain topic and he seems to be from India. I liked his, um, his video on YouTube. I'll include that down below. But I also looked at a video by this one spiritual teacher who's also Indian and he, he shared the different days and nights and what it means, you know, for each aspect of the goddess, each name, you know, oh my goodness, each aspect which has a name which is all the goddess so it's just like i said different aspects of the goddess okay and i can for whatever reason i can't remember the name of the guru right now but he's the guy who created art of living i really like doing research and just sitting with it and then just seeing what comes forward for me and then how i can incorporate it into my life and you know what resonates with me and how to you know go about something so now let's fast forward back to this morning i went ahead and played the mantra for kal ratri and kal, Ra kal ratri is a name for the goddess kali a lot of us have heard of kali right she has dark skin dark as night as they say she's fierce right fierce and scary and she defeated demons right and she's got all these different weapons it's said that she's drank the blood of some enemies which i i looked into that story a little bit more it's because every time the blood of the demon once it fell onto the floor it would just um i guess regenerate or just come back to life so that's why she drank the blood so that it wouldn't fall to the ground and regenerate but regardless you know this is a fierce aspect of the goddess you know someone who is like a warrior and that takes that anger that that i guess what we usually would associate with masculine energy it's it's in the goddess this rage this fierceness this fire this warrior energy that conquers demons that conquers darkness so this aspect of the goddess the spiritual teacher that created art of living he said you know his interpretation of kal ratri is that you know he broke down the name kal and ratri and said that this is celebration of the night of the void of the night he said think of you know when it turns nighttime so many of us feel soothed by the night and so just like this, we can find that comfort, we can find that solace in this aspect of the goddess. Or, you know, in the goddess, she comforts us. She comes over us like nighttime, the peace of the night, the silence of the night. It's in this aspect of the great mother, of the goddess, that you can find that blanket of peace, that blanket of solace and quiet. Um, now the lecturer that i to talked about he said that on day seven people celebrate the aspect of the goddess that represents knowledge which the aspect of goddess that that is about knowledge and represents knowledge is saraswati that's also a different perspective on day seven of navratri and I'm not gonna let it confuse me because it also has to do with celebrating the goddess, right? So I take it as it is. And, and honestly, Saraswati and celebrating knowledge, which is, you know, research, wisdom, the arts, and the arts covers many things, right? It covers actual art, music, uh, literature, the sciences, you know, philosophy, all that good stuff, theater. It ended up resonating with me because I had a dream this morning before I woke up where I was in this um, school, a school-like environment and I was discussing things with some people and it's crazy, it's crazy, not really crazy, but it's just different because in this dream, I was like an observer in a sense, as in me, my awareness was an observer of this 
other part of me, an aspect of me actually being in the dream and the reality where I'm discussing stuff with other philosophers, educators, whatever it be, truth seekers. And um, specifically, we were talking about things pertaining, I think, to nature and biology. Um, yeah, I really think it was biology, which is interesting because that's not something I studied when I was in university. Although now I'm very, very much into plants, the plant kingdom. And uh, yeah, so I think, you know, in this reality, I guess it's just a different version of me. I don't know. At this, <laughs> sometimes I know, sometimes I'm like, ah, I definitely tuned into an alternate reality or um, you know, it's more of a message or whatever. Right now, I don't really know, but it felt really real. And in the dream, I talked about going back to study biology, going to get like a, a higher degree in education in biology. So I thought that was interesting. And when I looked up day seven and found out that for some people, they celebrate Saraswati on this day, I was like, hey, that's really cool. And years ago, when I first heard of Saraswati, I really, really resonated with her. You know, her energy, especially since I'm a very creative person and love the arts. Um, so yeah, I really, really resonated with her. I was like really amused and inspired. I'm like, yay, this is cool. And then um, when I did further research, I wanted to check in with um, the one guru from Art of Living and see his take on it. And that's when I found out about Kalratri. And I was like, hey, that's cool too. And um, then I went ahead and listened to, uh, I believe it was a Japa for Kalratri. And then I went ahead and put on something for Saraswati. And after that, I wanted to enjoy my morning smoothie while watching this anthropology video. That I've been waiting to watch. Um, I think it was called or is called The Lost Culture of the Goddess and it's by this one anthropologist that I've been following on YouTube for a while and his content has just gotten really really juicy lately and you know I can tell he's really tuned in because lately a lot of his stuff has been on the goddess. Like he's really come forward with a lot of content on sacred bloodlines and cultures of the goddess the lost knowledge of the goddess a lot of stuff so he's a masculine which is amazing right a man coming forward to assist in the uncovering the remembering of the truth and reintegration of the divine feminine of the goddess and how we knew all this we celebrated and devoted time energy to the goddess we worshiped the goddess and then it just was flipped on us and hidden and that right now this is a great segue to bring in the other part of why i felt like i needed to make this video because i was just seeing all these connections while um already knowing of this day of celebration for navratri and the content I was watching on his channel, Robert Sepper, his channel, because he mentioned the Black Madonna. And I was like, wow, this is incredible, you know, um, because of what today is and how a lot of people uh, are devoting time to Kali and just the embodiment and the characteristics, the, the traits of the goddess that is comforting that is like the peace and silence of the night right nighttime the darkness the void and so you when you hear these words you know you picture darkness and black right the color black just really dark and it made me think of the black madonna so that ties in really well so the black madonna represents the hidden it represents the goddess who was hidden away, first of all, hidden so that she would not be harmed. And when I say she, I'm referring to Mary Magdalene, Mary Magdala, 
Miriam, the partner, the wife of Yeshua. So there, there is a lot of symbolism, a lot of structures, uh, sacred sites in parts of France. And I want to say maybe going up through Spain and other places, even in Ireland, I believe. It's just, it's definitely in France, okay? The one part of France where Mary and Mary and her child and whoever else was with her went to find safety. And uh, then the community, uh, the family, the bloodline where they populated and were raised and spread out. Um, spread out through different parts of Europe moving up north and northwest. That's one meaning of the Black Madonna, okay? That has to do with Mary, with Mary Magdalene. Black Madonna, I believe, has a lot of other references too, but it still goes back to the goddess, okay? The priestess, the goddess, and I guess you could say like the occult, the hidden, and so first of all, it wasn't just Mary Magdalene who was hidden, but the goddess herself, right? The goddess was buried. The Catholic Church tried very, very hard and with a lot of success to bury and hide the practices, the culture of the goddess and then also to pervert to twist to completely um how do you say distort the knowledge of the priestess the culture of the priestess and the culture of the goddess so it's like the goddess became unknown the goddess became hidden but the knowledge was always there. Throughout places on earth, there's still all these places where a person would be able to find the truth if they if they searched for it, if they went looking, if, if you know what I mean? Like if you were a truth seeker, if you were, or maybe even incarnated into a culture that still had its roots in these older traditions, so yeah, so I don't know. I'm just really tickled today and going with the flow because I'm just seeing all these cool little cookie crumbs, all these cool little things that are threading and weaving together for me. And just, you know, it it makes it that much more juicy and rich for me in, in devoting time to the goddess to Navratri and just, you know, at random moments, giving my gratitude, my energy and, and yeah. So before I go, let me share that, you know, this could help you. Well, first of all, if you're like really into research or if any of this is resonating with you, then, you know, this should be like tickling your fancy right now. <laughs> and you'll go watch all these cool little videos. But um, what I wanna share with you that you can take away from this is that, you know, Saraswati, you know, it's, she is the embodiment and the representative of knowledge, okay? So knowledge, awareness, and being wise, that is the opposite of ignorance, okay? So ignorance obviously means without awareness ignorance is without light and light light is information okay so ignorance is like being asleep not being mindful without light without information so think of it like this in our world today shine your light as bright as you can and go forth and share your light, share information, share truth with others who are ready to hear it, who are thirsty for truth. And this is one way, really, 
there is no other way because violence is not necessary. But, you know, fight ignorance with awareness, with knowledge. So we have a lot of ignorant stuff happening right now, you know? So stay steadfast in, in truth and in knowledge. And it helps you to stay alert, to stay awake and not fall into a trap of deception by you searching for the truth yourself. So don't just jump onto the bandwagon of something just because others are doing it. Don't just jump onto this because I'm sharing this with you. If it resonates, you know, get out there, look at some of the videos or any or all the videos I'm about to share below and Google to your heart's desire, do whatever, come to your own conclusions on what I'm saying. And if it resonates and if it helps you in your journey in this life, then take it along with you. You know what I mean? So that goes for anything, not just with what I'm sharing with you. But think about anything else. So in regards to politics, don't just fucking believe, you know, the person who's getting up on the podium to share his or her stance on something. You know, don't just go along with what someone says because they're just teaching something. Don't just go along with something because that person calls himself a spiritual teacher. You know, anybody could just get up and say, hey, I'm a spiritual teacher and just teach you nonsense. And if they have the charisma, the charm and all of that to to persuade you to believe it can happen. So it's just with with all the information out there, you know, even just getting on the Internet or social media or whatever, reading a book, watching a video, a movie. You be diligent. You, the student of life, you do the research, find the truth and carry that truth with you to fight ignorance, to fight the darkness. That's one thing you can take away from this, okay? And that, just revel in it and dance in it, knowing that this is an aspect of the goddess. Two, okay, so that was Saraswati, knowledge, and then the second one, Kalratri, Kali, the darkness, the dark, the black-skinned goddess, the fierce goddess, her energy is fierce. It's a warrior. She's a warrior. This is the energy that was able to go out there and kick some serious ass to kill demons, okay? So what to you, what do demons represent? Does it represent ignorance? Does it actually represent actual demons? Does Do demons represent parasitic entities in, in the spiritual realm? Does it, does that represent actual parasitic entities in the physical realm um do demons represent you know anger frustration um impatience unkindness selfishness jealousy lust lying you know and these are all things within right so you can look at look at it that way too that you can call on the goddess you can devote and give energy and call upon the goddess say great mother help me help me with what's going on within me so that i can be more in tune with my true nature uh more in tune and in alignment with my soul i want to be a better person i want to be who i truly am you know not this not this mask not this identity that was thrown upon me or that you know beliefs and stuff that were instilled in me programmed into my psyche because of where i grew up because of the family i incarnated to not, not you know because of the institutions i was indoctrinated at you know call upon the goddess and call upon the goddess and the divine feminine within yourself to invoke that kali energy to destroy all illusions you can call on the goddess within to to invoke that peaceful night energy if you're feeling anxious if you're scared if you're frustrated you know so th that's two things that i hope you can take away from this aside from everything else that i shared um let me see real quick if there's anything else that wants to come forward 
So if any of this has interested you, I'll let you know that there are still, let's see, two more days of Navratri, okay? Because it's nine days and nights. So, oh, I hear thunder. It's exciting. Woohoo! But yeah, so Saturday and Sunday, and then there on Monday, it's like a day of victory, of celebration. Um, for the inner work you've done during these nine days and nights. Celebration to overcome things, that you've overcome things or that you will overcome. And they say that it's auspicious to, to start something, you know, after Navratri. So just to let you know that, you know, after all that inner work you did and devotion to your spiritual path and the goddess, then you can take all that yummy, powerful energy and put it forward towards um, something in your life. All right, that's all I have to share for now. Thank you for being here, for tuning in. I want to get off so I can uh, enjoy this thunderstorm that's about to hit very, very soon because I can hear the thunder. Before I go, I want to let you know that I've done some things differently. I've got an Etsy shop now. Woohoo! Yeah, I'm excited. Um, because like I said, I've I've been really guided, you know, by my fairy family to reconnect with plants again and flowers <clears throat> and all that good stuff. So right now I have one flower essence up on my shop, but I will have more soon. I have a honeysuckle flower essence, but I need to upload that. And I'll have a rose tincture that will be ready around mid-November. Juicy stuff. I began the work and the magic the night of the venus moon conjunction which i think took place last week october 13th if you don't know the significance of that um yep there goes the rain Woohoo! the venus moon conjunction marked the heart chakra gateway venus passed and went from the throat chakra into the heart chakra gateway where she'll be for a little bit before she moves on because she's in her descent right now and moves down into the solar plexus gateway but right now this is about the heart chakra gateway and i felt really really called my roses were just calling to me and saying hey come play with us and prepare us for this heart chakra gateway so i'll have it ready it'll be ready to actually put out there and for people to buy mid-November. So that'll be up on my shop. But what I have available thus far are some sound healings, sound healings, guided meditations. I encourage you to go check it out. I wanna encourage you to also just poke around on my site and see if anything, of any of the services I have is something that would benefit you, especially with what's going on right now. It's super important to clear out your your energy field as often as possible especially with how much the collective is being purged right now so there is just there are so many people right now who don't realize they're tuned into the collective and tuned into the the part of the collective that's purging so people may be feeling so much anxiety even if they don't necessarily feel like they should be feeling anxiety, right? Like maybe things are okay, but for whatever reason, they're just like, wow, I feel very anxious today. There's all kinds of stuff. A lot of stuff is being purged from the collective. And you know, with everything that's going on with COVID and the elections in the United States around the corner, um, there's just a lot of emotions. And so many people are being triggered because of what's taking place this year. It's helping a lot of people trigger awake. And you know, when you're triggered awake, oh my God, right? It's kind of hard sometimes. Sometimes it's smooth sailing and sometimes it's hard. You know, the shadow work is scary or it's the shadow work is instant. And a lot of people don't realize that they're doing shadow work and may struggle. So that's where like a lot of um, these tough emotions come in to play these energies and you just got to think of it as like i don't know if you've heard it elsewhere with um light language channelers and, and spiritual teachers but 
you know, I noticed it in the springtime. Like, man, when I heard about COVID and some other stuff and just the energy that was in the air, I was like, wow, these, like, this lower level energy, if you want to call it the dark, the dark agenda, the parasitic race, that's a good one. They're trying to kick back really hard because planet Earth is shifting. So many of us on the planet have awakened and are here and not just human beings but there's other beings that are helping planet earth at this time that are helping the human race and so consciousness is rapidly changing and the vibration on earth is rising and it's like it's it's like it's throwing a tantrum you know think of a you know think of a person who maybe had some challenges and trauma in childhood and so when they grow up even as an adult they still kind of act like a child when they get triggered and you know they want that attention they they want the push pull feeling because that's only what they're used to they don't realize that they can be loved and have attention without throwing the tantrum you know what i mean it's it's the same it's the same concept okay this dark agenda this parasitic race is just kind of like having this fit having a fit because because things are just elevating on planet earth elevating and with elevation and consciousness on the planet they can't feed they cannot eat because they feed off low level emotions they feed off fear they feed off everything that that stems from fear so if you are full of joy, if you are full of empowerment, if you know you are sovereign, you're not feeding those fuckers. So you know, they're, they're trying to have their last kicks and there's just different, different things going on. I'm even hearing now that some, a lot of people are having a, a lot of nightmares. So to me, I'm like, wow, I feel like that means now they're basically trying to invade astral, certain parts of astral dream state to cause a person to feel terror so that that person then is in that energetic vibration so they can feed. So <laughs> basically me saying all this stuff right now, I'm, I'm saying that uh, what I one of the things that I do can be of service to you. It's so important to maintain your space. It's so important to have a pure body, a pure physical body, uh, a pure mental body, a pure emotional body, a pure spiritual body. So, uh, and there's many facets to that and ways to do that. So I have a few things that can help you with that. I'm a pranic healer, so I can actually go into your inner space, your inner aura, and cut negative cords, parasitic cords, and clear out your aura, and then clear out your chakras, okay? That's one thing. Another thing that would really help with having a purer body, being, a, being more pure in general, is a course which I am not completely done with. I explained why in my last video, but long story short, uh, I feel like I need to re-record some things and I, you know, all willing, I'm going to have that up soon. I'm not going to give a time on that, but you can sign up so that you are alerted when the course is available by going to my university, Al Cosmopolite University. I'll have the link below. I also have a free, completely free masterclass. So when you sign up for for the masterclass, you not only get that information free, you get some information on the course that'll be available and you get a discount so that when you do sign up, you get that discount. So I encourage you to do that. Um, also, you know, I have tons of writings on my blog post or blog post, my blog that can help with a variety of things. So I encourage you to go sift through my blog, check out my website, um, you know, go through my social media. Whenever an image pops out at you, just go with your intuition. Click on it and read it and s just allow yourself to receive downloads. Allow yourself to receive, okay? And obviously, you found my video, so that means if anything video-wise resonates or if anything pops out at you, 
follow your intuition click on the video and if you don't have time to watch it just make a playlist so you can save it and get back to it later you know listen to your intuition your guidance so i have a youtube channel and i've got videos on instagram videos on facebook so you know wherever you've found me just you know sift through and see if anything else resonates to help you i also do readings i haven't done some in a while but i love doing readings so if you need some guidance you know you can hit me up for that as well okay i also do sound healing i love doing sound healing obviously i now have them up on my etsy shop but if you want a personal sound healing tons of fun you know uh, contact me about that as well and I also do coaching coaching guidance so please check that out it's also on my website under the services tab my offerings so that you can get a better idea of how that would be okay once again I want to thank you for being here thank you for resonating and for clicking the video thank you for your support and I just I wish you well I wish you well be kind to yourself be kind to others. Let's be as compassionate as we can be. Namaste. Mitakwe oyasin. Aroha nui. Bye, everybody. And have a good weekend. Let's do this. Let's do this.